Good morning, this is Jeff with Sewer Tech Northwest. We are at property address 534 Northeast 74th Avenue here in Portland. Located at the base of the uh, staircase, come down to the basement. Got a backflow valve. Uh, it would appear to be four inch pipe as the uh, vent stack is four inch cast iron. We're gonna check the overall condition and serviceability of the sanitary sewer line. Water is a running and we're gonna zero out the foot counter here at the base right inside the uh, backflow preventer. Off we go here. And it looks like the line's swapping over to cast iron immediately upon access right up ahead here. Okay, line's transitioning here to six inch concrete pipe. Concrete is looking a little bit wore out here. You got some pretty heavy aggregate rock exposed. We've got some standing water issues we're getting into. So we'll get a, ooh. Yeah, this is not looking great. This is looking like the, uh, the line is either severely bellied. The way that the debris is packing up in here though, it looks like the, the concrete pipe is opened up to the ground at this point. This tie-in right here, is likely a storm system connection. It's very hard to see it right now because of all the debris in the line, um, but that's what that's looking like. But this this concrete section is, is done. If this hasn't backed up before, it is just a sewer backup waiting to happen. Yeah. There's the main lateral connection at 67 feet. We're going to let the line drain. Okay, so here at 52 feet, my camera right now is upside down. Um, if you were facing the house from the street, facing the front door of the house from the road, that Y connection right there would be coming in from the right side. 
So anyway, this uh, it's hard to say if it's active or not. It's a very clean piece of pipe. There's not a lot of deb debris streaking coming out of it. And it sounds like the homes next door are newer. Um, they were built, it sounds like about 2010-ish, somewhere in that ballpark. So very, very much after the outlaw party lines. So it may not be active at all, but I am going to check. I'm going to go locate and get it marked. And we're just past the transition to clay pipe. We might get lucky here. That may actually fall into the street. All right. So I've, I've been able to put a, a rough marking down. And I accidentally, when I wrote that down, I think I put the Y coming in from the wrong direction. Um, anyway, the direction it appears to be coming in from, you've got brand spanking new houses there. Like they look like they were built like in the last year. Um, so highly unlikely they got away with being able to have some kind of party line. And I am, if you can see where I parked the camera, I parked it right here to try and get that antenna as close to about the middle of that Y as possible. I'm picking that, that signal up just past the face of the curb. It looks like it's just into the roadway where that's at. And that is indicative and normal in this era. Generally, when you see the clay transition, that's often happening right at the face of the curb. So that, that's, that party line on its own there may not be anything that even falls into homeowner territory. But either way, the line needs to be dealt with. It's in very, very rough condition at this point, and it very high likelihood it's going to get a backup at some point. So I'm going to map this all out with green paint here. Okay, so I just located there. So as you face the house from the street, we're oriented way up against the left side property line. If not, I don't know where the property line is. So I don't know if we've actually crossed or not, but it's one of those that kind of flirts with the possibility of it. Um, where I just located there was a couple feet back from the curb in the grass curb strip area, about six foot, eight inches deep. And there is a car parked smack dab over the spot where I'm trying to locate that tie-in for the party line. So it's a hard spot to locate in general. Um, so that marking you're gonna see just past the curb there, take that with a grain of salt to an extent, it's somewhat rough. I can't get smack dab on top of the spot there to locate it because of the vehicle. Yeah, it looks like you've got big, huge river rocks coming into the sewer line here. Okay, right now, um, again, there's gonna be some markings here that are somewhat, you're gonna to have to consider somewhat rough. We're going through kind of a, there's a bunch of foliage right on the property line, the left side of the property line. The line's going underneath that right now, so I, it's another spot where I cannot get my locate wand right over the top of the line. Anyway, you've got some roots in there. It looks like rocks are getting in somehow. It might be through open pipe joints. Um, you know, sometimes it's even through a downspout tie-in like you're seeing there it's kind of hard to say where it's coming from but that that's not just debris build up there the line is it's done you've got river rocks that are coming into it somehow a lot of times the bottom of the pipe will wear out completely and open up to the ground that might be what you've got going on here so if you find out you can keep the configuration the, the route of this current sewer line it it's probably would behoove you um to jet the sewer line out to see if you've got good slope and grade because this is one of those lines you might be able to do trenchlessly by epoxy liner so i'd look into that anyway i'm going to mark right here and then we'll check out the cast iron if i recall i think the cast iron's in decent shape it's mostly this concrete pipe that needs some work all right so where we are currently at you're going to see a green t marking we're about i'm getting between five foot ten and six feet deep here the line uh pops out from underneath the uh front left corner area of the uh, front patio we're just sitting just a little bit out from that right now. You got root penetration there. That's obviously kind of a small root. When you get further into that section, you may have roots underneath all that stuff. Anyway, I highly recommend a full update to all clay pipe and concrete pipe that's on property. Um, again, you could start with hydrojetting to see if you can get that cleared out well enough. You could give you a better view of, of how that line's looking there. Um, because what we don't know is how that stuff got into the line. You know, sometimes it's from a downspout, a underground uh, drainage system that's worn out and it's opened up to the ground and that's what's allowed the rocks to get into the pipe. But from the condition of the concrete in general, it is very, very worn out and it's ready for update regardless. 
Um, the biggest advantage in jetting is you can see it as to whether or not you've got the skeleton to work with for doing an epoxy liner, which is a trenchless repair system. Or, so, or if not almost entirely trenchless, it does depend on the kind of access point you have. I'm not sure if they'd be able to get a liner through the backflow valve or not. Um, so anyway, it's worth looking into all the different repair processes and see which makes the most sense. You've got trenchless, semi-trenchless, and a good old-fashioned dig it up style. So the cast iron pipe's still in good shape, has good flow, as is the ABS pipe. It's the concrete and clay that are the biggest concern here. Um, after any repairs are done, make sure you do a rescope to check the work. And you want to do that rescope when, when the trench is closed if you do a dig style repair to make sure you don't have any settling problems afterwards.